Hello and welcome to the Next in Line podcast where we are helping to prepare you for whatever is next in line. As always, I am your host, Chance Pitts, and I'd like to thank you for tuning into this episode. Guys and gals, welcome into another episode of the podcast. Very excited to have y'all in here with me for another conversation about mindset and mentality when approaching your personal development. But guys, before we get into the topic for today, let's take care of a little bit of housekeeping and some announcements. If you receive value from this episode or any other episode of the Next in Line podcast, I would ask that you share the show with like-minded individuals who could receive the same kind of value. That's the best way for us to help this podcast and this movement grow and to reach as many people as possible while helping as many people as possible. That's our goal, guys, just to help as many people as we can reach their full potential and continue down their personal development path. Now, guys, along with that, you can give us a follow to keep up with all the daily stuff that we've got going on and the events that we participate in. That's at Next in Line Development on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. That's also a good place to uh, shoot us a DM. Any questions, comments, or concerns that you might have, that's a great place to get in contact with us there. And if you want to participate in any of the events that we have going on or any of the races we're going to race in um, and want to be supported by the crew that's going to be there and uh, be part in what next in line has going on you can also reach out to us on those platforms as well so guys i mentioned races a couple of the announcements that we have are that we have some upcoming races kd 225 will be on october 23rd in clinton missouri it's my first race over 100 miles in length, and I'm super stoked. Like we've talked about, I've got an amazing group of individuals around me. Uh, it's going to be pacers. It's going to be crew members out there with us. Just couldn't be more excited about it. We had a phenomenal meeting, getting everything set up, talking through different scenarios, talking through the rules, uh, talking through kind of a game plan and approach coming towards this race, um, and all the crazy unknown factors that go into running your first 225-mile race. Um, and I think everybody's as, as excited as I am um, to get into this race. And, and it's just something that I couldn't be looking forward to anymore. We're four weeks out, and we are absolutely stoked. Now, along with that, had a phenomenal 50-mile training run. Uh, felt really good coming off of it this weekend, too. So very, very happy with the results of that. Um, Going to give another couple of really challenging weeks in a training schedule and really full weeks as far as distance goes and mileage goes and then we'll start to taper things off and really get towards the uh the race that we have coming up so very excited about that very excited to really test myself and push myself to the limits so we'll see where we go from there guys following that we will be at brazos bend state park over in needville texas for the brazos bend 100 on december 2nd We're going to be out there supporting Michael Ruiz as he takes on his first 100-mile ultramarathon. He has ran a 50K up to this point uh, as an official race, and congrats to him on PRing his 50K as he did a 50K training run this weekend out in Moody, Texas. Uh, But Michael is segueing from that 50K up to the 100 mile distance and man he's just giving it hell through his training block he's done a phenomenal job and we couldn't be more excited about him getting ready to knock this thing out i really think that's all the announcements i've got for y'all today guys so before we get too far into this deal i want to go ahead and say that look i understand there's two very different areas of discussion that we can go into with the conversation that we're about to have, especially whenever it deals with kind of some of the hurdles that life might send your way, some of the circumstances you might find yourself dealing with. And there is, like I said, two different sides to it. One is that sometimes life deals us a situation that completely and utterly changes our entire perspective. It changes how we have to operate on a daily basis. It can be something so monstrous that it hits us with, like a terrible car accident that leaves an individual paralyzed. It could be the loss of a limb. It could be the loss of life in someone that's very close to you. And it has just this incredible emotional and psychological 
damage that's done to you. And I understand those can be dehabilitating. I truly do. But that's not the subject of conversation that we're diving into today. Today, I want to discuss the other side. The cards that were quote-unquote dealt to us. The traditions that have been passed on to us from the past. And a lot of times we use tradition fondly, but I don't see this as something that most people are truly fond of. And that is that many of us are handed circumstances or handed traditions or handed a way of life or or, are taught something that contradicts what common sense or what an educated approach would be to living a healthy and productive lifestyle. And a lot of us never break the cycle. A lot of us can look at our family histories and see things like diabetes, heart disease, cancers, and several other things that were more so a product of the decisions that were made. And I understand cancer is a very blurred line there, so don't come at me. But a lot of those things are decision-based on how we live our lives and the approaches that we take. And the results are a direct outcome of those decisions. Whenever we have a history, a family history, of a lot of preventable diseases, many of us, and I say us because for a long time I did the same thing, many of us grab onto that and we wrangle it and we pull it down and hold it tight until it's an excuse that we can keep with us and walk on a leash beside us anytime anybody criticizes anything that we do or has a question about why we make the decisions that we do, whether it be overeating or just eating unhealthy or drinking or lack of exercise or whatever it might be that that is against you, working counterproductively in your life as compared to the person that you might want to try to be. And y'all might hear my uh, guest on the podcast. If y'all do, my uh, my daughter's a little bit upset out there. It's bedtime and we're trying to get her down. So bear with me if you hear that. But a lot of times we put ourselves in a situation to where we feel like there's no going back. There's no changing. There's no different path that we can walk down than the one that we've been committed to because of what we've been taught, because of the decisions of often many others. And the truth of the matter, cold and plain, is that's a lie. It's wrong. It's incorrect. And many of you who are listening to this podcast probably understand that. I know many of the conversations I've had with listeners and with the people that have been close to me, y'all tend to understand that these changes have to be made and they have to be decided because many of us find ourselves in a place that we don't want to be. It's been a place that that we've gone to out of comfort, out of ease, and maybe sometimes out of necessity because of a situation we found ourselves in and it was just easier, quote-unquote, to go that path. We didn't really have other options. But now that we're adults and now that we're out in the real world and we're thinking for ourselves and we have a desire to be successful in other endeavors, it's really important to understand that nobody's coming to save us. It's nobody else's decision. It might be the tradition. It might be the family history. But it is absolutely and 100% up to you to change, and to get the results that you want. And not to take this down a crazy rabbit hole, but there's a perfect scenario from a movie that I can think of that just lays this out 
absolutely perfectly. And this is a movie that I believe deep down inside my wife enjoys. But every time I put it on, I guess I put it on a little too often, she always rolls her eyes and throws her hands up and says, really, we're watching this again? But I can't get enough of it because of exactly the lesson that I'm talking about from that movie. And this movie is Knight's Tale. Yes, it's the old medieval movie with Heath Ledger that has all the modern rock music in it and everything like that, and it's kind of goofy. But there's a theme in this story that starts from a very, very early point. And it starts with William, the main character, Heath Ledger, asking his dad, can a man change his stars? And his dad answers him, yes, William. If he believes enough, a man can do anything. What he's really asking there is he's asking for permission. He's asking for permission to really try, to really do something and be something more than what society says he can be, than what the tradition would hold him out to be. He's born to be a Thatcher's son, right? Just to carry on the tradition to live in poor side and have a life that is somewhat insignificant to never have the woman that he loves to never have the name the honor that he craves but he asked permission there and luckily his father answered it properly right he gave himself the permission or he gave his son the permission i should say to be more to strive to be more and as many of you know if you're familiar with the movie he carries on to work with a knight and try to build a name for himself. And he gets to a point where things kind of go downhill and, and then through circumstance, sorry if I'm doing any spoilers here, but it's an old movie guys. If you haven't seen it yet, you absolutely should. Um, But I'm going to spoil it a little bit. He works with this knight until somehow that knight dies one day in the middle of the tournament. And rather than go hungry and not get paid, William decides to saddle up And to joust. So he participates in the last round of the tournament. Has to just stay on his horse and he wins. And he sure does. And from there, he sees the path. He sees his path to his success. He sees his path to his his reckoning. His life changing. The major event that's going to take him in a completely different direction. And change his stars. And he goes after it relentlessly. It takes some convincing, it takes some lying, it takes some absolute insanity in some ways, bringing on the companions that he brought on him and going into the events that he went on, forging documents and pursuing true love in that endeavor as well. But the theme of the story stays the same the entire way. And through hard work, perseverance, luck... And just honestly, an unwavering ability to figure it out. He changes his stars. And why did I go on this long rant and tell you this whole synopsis of what this Knight's Tale movie was? Guys, it's because we're living the same thing. The problem is, everyone we've asked permission from has told us no. And perhaps asking permission wasn't outright asking, but it was whenever the rules were laid out for how we should address our lives, whether it was how we should handle our finances because we've always been broke and poor as a family, whether it was how we should handle our diets because we've always just ate whatever we could find or whatever was the easiest Or maybe it was just dealing with a career and a dead-end job that we weren't excited about and weren't happy with because that's just the way that people like you and me live. 
Maybe we didn't ask for that permission. Maybe the example was set for us, and that's what told us that we didn't have permission to change our stars, to be ourselves, to go after the things that we want. But there's a beautiful, beautiful thing that's happening around me right now. I am seeing so many individuals pursuing greatness. I'm seeing Michael going after this 100-mile race. I've seen him with career changes. I've seen amazing things that he's accomplished here recently. I've got great friends close to me starting businesses. I've got good friends that are that are changing jobs and changing careers and having constant productive conversations about how to get more out of life, how to strive to achieve their goals, how to give themselves permission to go down the path that they're wanting to go down. And they're really separating and dividing out that line because this is a very thin line, but they're dividing that line and then crossing over it the one that separates the is tradition. I came by it honestly. And I'm going to be the one that changes. Ed Milet actually has a phenomenal, phenomenal story about this. And I won't bore you with all the details of it, but the general little snippet that I'll share with you is that every family is headed down a path and a trajectory. And they're headed on full steam ahead, exactly where they've always been headed, until one individual, one person, decides to make a change. There weren't rich people in the family until one person decided to make a change, to start a business, to go after what they wanted, and to become rich. It hadn't always been like that. There weren't always ultra marathoners in the family until perhaps one person decided to go, decided to make a change, and then it all switched. All it takes is one. It takes one individual to decide that they've had enough, to decide that they want something more. And the rest is history. And guys, you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, this all sounds great. It all sounds so dandy. I could I could change all of these different things, but that just doesn't work for me, Chance. And I understand. I do. Because much like each and every one of y'all who is scared of change, who is scared of doing something different, thinking outside of the box, I'm scared too. I've been scared. There's so many different aspects of all of this. It's crazy. There's so many things to be worried about, right? It can be any of these different things. It could be going back to school. It could be starting a new career. There's so much that could go wrong with those two things. Admitting that you don't know what you're doing and being a novice at something again for the first time as an adult, That's extremely challenging. Maybe it's just you're experienced and you've got a lot of good things to share with people, but you've got imposter syndrome and you feel like the minute you open your mouth, it's going to get shot down. People are going to laugh at you. People are going to catch you not knowing what you're doing, even though you've got a good idea of exactly what it is you're trying to do. I have that one a lot, guys, but There's so many different scenarios that that scare us all to death. Asking for a raise from our boss or just the fact that maybe we could give it our all. Maybe we could strive and pour everything we have into a goal and end up coming up short and not being quite enough. Whatever it is, guys, we all go through that scared point. We all go through those things. We all go through the doubt. But it's the individuals that decide to take action and decide to actually do something that understand that on the other side of that fear and on the other side of that adversity is the greatness 
is the happiness, is the joy, is the achievement and success that they have always wanted, that you and I have always wanted. So what do we do? Well, once we overcome the fear, once we finally decide to set that to the side, to get rid of it, to not let it be a factor and control our day-to-day lives, there's a few steps that we can each go down. And I've lived a few of these with my changes, whether it was my weight loss journey, whether it was my segue into ultra marathoning, whether it was a career change. And I'm also still trying to get myself to take some of these steps with business and some of the endeavors that I've chosen to really start to gain interest in and and that have really attracted my attention. But step one of that process, guys, is you've got to take the time to truly decide what it is that you want. What is the priority in your life? What is going to help you get to where you want to go and to live the life that you want to live? Maybe it's a change that's substantial. Maybe it's huge. Maybe it's a change that's small. And maybe it's something little that over time could add up to being something that would really really have a great and lasting impact on your life. Whatever it is, it's okay. But you need to understand what you're committing to it and how much of yourself you're going to commit to it. Because if it's a big goal, like losing, I don't know, 50 pounds, not even that much to be a big goal, but, but if it's something like that, it's going to take a lot It's going to take a lot of engagement. And that's not to scare anybody off. I'm just being very real and honest. I believe anybody that decides to and works hard enough can achieve these things. But it's going to take a lot of engagement. It's going to take understanding a diet, understanding caloric deficits, understanding exercising sustainably, understanding dieting sustainably. Discipline to keep yourself on those paths whenever everything around you, everyone around you is telling you, it's okay, you don't have to do that. Nobody's judging you. We like you just the way you are. And whenever everything inside of you is telling you, I don't want to get out of bed and go for that run. I don't want to get out of bed and go for that workout. Uh, it's easier just to grab Whataburger on the way home than it is to go home and and pan sear some chicken breast and throw it over some rice with some vegetables it's tough it takes commitment you've got to decide how committed you're going to be next guys put yourself around people who are doing what it is that you want to do find that person that's lost the weight if you're interested in losing weight Find the person that started a business and gone out on their own and had to bootstrap it and went through some rocky years and and had to figure some shit out. Go be around them for a little bit. If it's running in, in ultra marathons and marathons, go find somebody who's actively doing that. Find somebody who is pursuing the endeavors that you want to pursue. And then just have a conversation, guys. Ask questions. Put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to be the novice. Don't be afraid to be the beginner. Just be honest. Hey, I don't know, but I want to. That'll go a very, very long way. Another thing you've got to do, set a measurable goal. And I say that very intentionally. Measurable goal. You've got to be able to understand your progression towards where you're going and to be openly honest with yourself about the progress that you are making. You have to be your own critic. Take pictures. Progress pictures are great. Write it down. Do a list. Make an itinerary for yourself every single day. 
and then at the end of the week, review it. See what days you hit your goals, what days you didn't, what days you were able to achieve all of the things that you hoped to achieve, and what factors played into that, what commonalities made you fail. I say made very loosely because at the end of the day, it's all an excuse, but it's how bad you want it, and it's the mindset that you bring into the into the game with you whenever you show up. Then, guys, if it's a big goal and it's a very measurable goal like that, set you a drop-dead date. Set you a date that it has to be done by and focus all of your energy into achieving just that. And number four ties directly into what I just said, guys. If you want something bad enough, if you've got a goal, if you've got something you're going after and you're looking to achieve, find out where it fits on the priority list in your life. And if it's high, if it's important to you, and it's important enough for you to consider it one of the things that we're talking about here today on this podcast episode, then you need to put it at the center of everything that you do. I am not saying that running is more important than the family. I am not saying that losing weight is more important than the family. I'm not saying either one of those things is more important than your job, than your friends, than your social life, than any of those things. That's not what I'm saying. But there comes a time whenever you've got to set aside dedicated time and commit to something that you truly want. Because if you continue to prioritize other things in your life in front of that objective, in front of that goal, you will continue to not achieve it. There is a beautiful balancing act that one day I may figure out, but I haven't yet. A newborn, a crazy running schedule, an insane work schedule, friends, family, and everything else that we have going on between this podcast, between my wife's job, and then making time for family and us. It's extremely challenging. But when it's time to zoom in and focus on the family, I'm zoomed in and focus on the family. When it's time to zoom in and focus on the job, I'm right there. But equally and fairly, when it's time to zoom in on the running, maybe go spend 12 hours training for a running event that's crazy long, I am zoomed in, I have it in my sights, and that is what my priority is. And I'll tell you along with that, guys, that you might not think you have time to focus on these things. You might not have time to really hone in on what it is that you want because maybe that goal is too consuming and too big and you don't have enough time to educate yourself on it and to to understand more and and do all this on top of training, there's ways to get it in. Think about all the content that you consume with social media. Think about all of the books that you read if you're a reader. Think about all the videos and the shows that you watch whenever you get home from work or on Saturday morning or Sunday morning. All of those times... Select what it is that you're choosing to put in front of you. If it's a goal that you can teach yourself something with, and guys, it's for every single one of us, that's true. You can take the time to put podcasts in your ears that focus on that topic, to put books in front of you that focus on that subject, to watch videos and to watch shows centered around becoming better at whatever it is that you want to do. You have to pour yourself into whatever endeavor it is that you're choosing to engage in and spend your free time taking care of business because nobody else is going to want it as bad as you have to want it. Nobody else is going to be able to do this for you. They're not going to be able to hand this to you on a silver platter. And anything worth doing that is challenging enough for you to be scared of it and for you to even have to be talked into it or for you to have to consider the objective uh, or the options of maybe failing something. Those are the things that you have to commit to overly. 
You have to truly engage and you have to prioritize and you have to just completely just immerse yourself into, honestly. But guys, that's really what I got for you. If you can do those things, if you can decide how bad you want it, if you can put yourself around those right people, if you can set measurable goals, and if you can put it really at the center of everything you do and make it a priority in life, in your life, then you can change your stars. And guys, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Next in Line podcast. Like I said, give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok at Next in Line Development. Make sure you share the show with somebody if you received some value with it, guys. Take a screenshot, share it on your social media accounts, tag us in it. Leave a rating or review if you can on the podcast platforms you're listening on. Like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Those things go a long way with helping push this message out, guys. Also, if you want to get involved in anything that we have going on events, don't hesitate to reach out. Guys, let us know what we can do to support you and your goals. That's what we're here for. Very, very happy to have y'all listening here. Until we meet again, go out and do challenging things. Push yourself to the limits, guys. Apply the things that we talk about here. And always be prepared for whatever is next in line.